Hello everyone and welcome to Italy, welcome to Genova and uh, more specifically welcome to Villa Cattaneo dell'Olmo. We are here in one of the frescoed rooms of uh, this villa which was uh, built in the 15th century, which was rebuilt in the 18th century and now hosts uh, the headquarters of the Ansaldo Foundation. In its uh, archive, uh, you can find uh, all the documentation of the company since uh, 1853, when the, uh, the story uh, began. And uh, this is the perfect place in a combination of heritage and technology to talk about the energy transition, which is the main focus of the event of today. During the event of today, we will focus on uh, one of the elements uh, which is expected to have a, a crucial role in the ongoing uh, transformation, which is hydrogen. And uh, we will do this uh, uh, with uh, Daniela Gentile, Senior Vice President Innovation and Quality in Ansaldo Energia. Welcome. Thank you. And with Stefano Gianatti, Executive Vice President Service in Ansaldo Energia. Welcome. Thank you. But before, let's take a look to the general scenario um, provided by Roland Berger, uh, Strategic Consultant, uh, and then we will talk about it. Energy transition is truly a global issue. Our fight against climate change requires that we further accelerate our decarbonization efforts. Today, only 20% of energy consumption is electric power. And at the same time, only a quarter of power is green power today. No doubt, we need to significantly increase our electrification efforts across all sectors. We need to decarbonize today's electrical power and we need to fully replace fossil fuels. Hydrogen is key for that. It is the essential fuel required to achieve decarbonization programs. There are three fields to use hydrogen for decarbonization. First, mobility. Trucks, cars and even planes. Secondly, industrial applications, steel, cement, ammonia and many others. And last but not least, there is power generation and electricity, for which hydrogen can also be used. We need to produce carbon-free energy not only for today's electricity demands, but also to support the electrification processes across all sectors. This will massively increase demand. We need to produce much more electricity and we need more capacity for that. At the same time, capacities for power generation will shift from coal and oil-fired plants to renewable energy. The increasing share of renewables will require new solutions to maintain grid stability and power quality. Gas turbines will be key. They will be the bridging technology, increasingly making use of carbon-free fuels, above all hydrogen, and as such, they sustain the growth of electricity generation and improve power quality. Power quality, by the way, is a very important issue. It is often neglected and it must be addressed in our decarbonization route. We see four particular challenges to the grid. On the first, there are the dark doldrums, moments where there is no sun, there is no wind. Here we need to have backup capacities that can be brought into the grid, brought to the grid with short notice. Secondly, we have a simple growth of power generating units and this needs to, needs to be mastered in parallel. And then we have something which is not much known today. We will face harmonics in the grid. These are waves that might have damaging effects to all inductive elements in the grid. And last, not least, 
we see new formal requirements. The European Union has launched an initiative around the grid codes, which now are implemented in all the member states. The grid codes define how the different actors that have access to the grid need to be managed. Huge challenge for the DSOs and the TSOs. This all means that in parallel to our efforts to decarbonize, we also need to develop a new perspective on the grids. The EU has recently set ambitious greenhouse gas reduction targets, reaching carbon neutrality by 2050. In order to reach this objective, public institutions, with you in the first place, are massively supporting the energy transition programs. The Next Generation EU Fund is promoting the green evolution with over 700 billion euros, but no meal comes free. New and much stricter emission limits are expected. The European Union has increased its 2030 carbon reduction target from 40% to 55% compared to 1990. And the cost per tonne of CO2 emissions is also rapidly rising. 80% in Europe just since October 2020, impacting CO2 intensive energy generation. Europe is a frontrunner, but also in the US, President Biden has promised $400 billion investments over the next 10 years to support the energy transition. And China, in the five-year plan adopted by the National People's Congress in March 2021, has outlined an 18% reduction target for CO2 intensity and a 13.5% reduction target for energy intensity by 2025. For the first time, China links its longer-term climate goals with a five-year plan. As a result, we believe that CO2 reduction will become a global goal, much sooner than many observers believe. This is the new scenario power producers are called to cope with. So we heard from the Roland Berger testimony how the scenario is going to evolve in the next uh, years. Uh, we have a growing electrification trend, uh, um, we have the 2030 European carbon reduction targets, uh, um, we have an increasing carbon uh, price in uh, Europe and massive public uh, support to energy transition uh, programs. We are not talking about future uh, now, but these factors are already influencing the expectation and programs of all the players. So the first question I want to ask to Daniela Gentile is, can you place hydrogen into this scenario as seen uh, from the power producer standpoint? Fossil fuel replacement and electrification are taking place in all main economy sectors. And these processes are leading to much higher renewable power production, especially solar and wind that can be stored using hydrogen as the energy vector. Hydrogen is a no-carbon fuel whose combustion only generates heat and no water and this is why it's said to become a key energy transition pillar. To best exploit the hydrogen potential, we have focused on three main objectives. The first, increase the fuel flexibility of our gas turbines so that they will be ready to burn hydrogen or biofuel when they will be available. Second, we increase the efficiency of our gas turbines to optimize the utilization of such valuable fuel. And third, increase the capacity to quickly face the grid and load variation and ensure the grid stability. Let's elaborate a little bit on this point. First of all, Renewables, in particular wind and solar, have grown in recent years and the trend is set to continue. To this purpose, on Saldo Energia, we want to place an important role in the sector and through uh, our new company, Ansaldo Green Tech, and, and we will launch specific initiatives uh, in the wind technology and in some energy storage sectors. But coming back to the renewables, we estimate that wind and solar contribution to total electricity generation mm -hmm. will reach 42% worldwide and approximately 47 in, in Europe in 2040. And this is posing a problem. Due to the intermittence and volatility of the renewables, the power production usually does not meet the demand. 
even when the total power generation over the year is in line with the total electricity demand in terms of terawatt hour, we have production in excess when the sun shines, the wind blows, and under production when they don't. And this fluctuation is cause of the grid instability. Energy in excess can be stored, a short-term storage can be provided by batteries and other technologies, but long-term storage is more safely and efficiently provided by power to gas. And what plays green hydrogen at the core of our scenario is that it may play a dual role of no carbon fuel and power buffer between energy surplus and deficit. Hydrogen make use of renewable overproduction, which often has to be correlated, can be stored in large quantities for a long time and enable CO2 free dispatchable power generation. Now, how natural gas come into play? According to World Energy Outlook 2020, natural gas is one of the prevailing ways to produce electricity today, accounting about one-fourth of worldwide generation, and it will be also like that in 2040, since it's expected to maintain an important chain in the next couple of decades. Now, most of the existing gas turbines can already burn hydrogen blended in the gas network with very limited modification. But we focus our R&D effort to provide new solutions that can allow to burn 50% hydrogen and more with manageable or no retrofitting at all. Significant quantity of hydrogen in the blend would allow energy producer to reduce CO2 emissions to guarantee the supply continuity, avoid stranded assets and protecting the power generation investments. So Daniela told us uh, why hydrogen is a key factor in the scenario of energy transition and beyond. So I want to ask uh, uh, Stefano Gianatti, as Ansaldo Energia you have 15 years of experience in uh, hydrogen use in a um, standard power generation plant. Um, can you tell us how and when all this is happening? Well, um, the Ansaldo Energia power plant where the hydrogen natural gas blend is already in use is the Brindisi Any Power Facility. This is, for, for duration and size, uh, one of the most extensive experiences in the world and it arose basically from an opportunity. The availability of low-cost industrial off-gas with high hydrogen rate. It was targeted since the beginning to CO2 reduction as well as to cost containment. The, initially, the project goals included three main prescriptions. First, fuel flexibility in order to burn high available natural gas hydrogen blends. Second, assured reliability with no major impact on the engine hardware as well as on the combustion system. And third, NOx emissions with the established regulatory limits. The Brindisi Thermal pa Plant adopts our F-Class 94.3A gas turbines, uh, one of the most proven technologies in the market, with more than 4 million equivalent operating hours accumulated worldwide. 94.3A turbines represent a well-established solution with many applications for baseload and peakers and suitable for both combined and simple cycle power plants. This kind of turbine hardware and control system feature advanced self-adjustment capability. They are able to easily adapt to the chemical composition of natural gas and different gas blends. They are capable to burn hydrogen up to 25%, uh, keeping 100% uh, of natural gas capability for safe backup operation. And with the addition of our well-proven autotune, a very nice digital system capable to automatically tune the engine to the actual ambient conditions, our gas turbines always, I would say, always run at the edge of their performances. 
Power bringt diese Experience als Proven, dass die 94.3a Turbine kann easily run on H2 mit smart adaption on burners, auxiliaries and balance of plant. By successful managing hydrogen handling and reactivity, we have made of Brindisi a groundbreaking and standard setting experience. And so, since we are talking about Brindisi, we, which is a, a real life, well established case uh, history, let's hear now this experience uh, described uh, by any power uh, which uh, owns and runs the plant. Good morning to all. In the Any Power plant in Brindisi, the history of methane hydrogen mixed combustion dates back to the period of construction in 2006. As the availability of processing gas produced by Versalis emerged, it was decided to exploit it in two of the three machines in progress of installation. The main characteristic of the gas produced by Versalis, consisting of a mixture of methane and hydrogen, was definitely the presence of hydrogen with variable and fluctuated concentration. The mixed combustion immediately appeared as a challenge to be met, causing in the early periods a limitation to the performance of the two AE94.3A turbines installed. Such limitation was then overcome. The technical case, in fact, represented an excellent example of operation and cooperation with unsold energy which has committed to implement all the change necessary for the management of hydrogen. Over the years, ENI has developed significant skills in the combustion of hydrogen natural gas blends, allowing the development of technology used to increase the percentage of hydrogen with which power gas turbines in order to generate low carbon electricity. The studies and research on operation, in fact, together with innovations introduced on the materials, have made it possible to transform the initial limitation into new challenges and opportunities. Less than five years ago, a test campaign began on the two machines that burn petrochemical gas. The results were well beyond the expectation that arose during the construction phase. A 30% increase of the gas produced by Versailles Pro rate and a consequent increase of 5% by volume of hydrogen in the mixture. The activity carried out has made it possible to obtain a substantial saving of CO2 emissions of 45 kiloton per year compared to the use of natural gas alone. In the future, ENI intends to continue in collaboration with Ansaldo Energia performing other test campaigns as to reach 40% of hydrogen by volume in the mixture without further hardware modifications and to improve technical performances in terms of efficiency, maximum power and gradients. So, uh, Daniela, uh, Ansaldo Energia already has a success story to tell about the um, hydrogen blend used in a 94.3A equipped plant. But uh, can you tell us, tell us how um, your research uh, has gone further, leveraging on this experience to design uh, new and more flexible uh, products? Since uh, in the past years you personally hit it, the, um, this development, can you tell us more about it? Yes, to, to present our innovation process uh, and the achievements, uh, we, we have to highlight uh, two points in advance. First, the Brindisi case that just Stefan was mentioned anticipated an issue that we expect to be common also in the near future, the fluctuation of hydrogen availability. This may occur either for the variable composition of the gas or for the intrinsically intermittent nature of the renewable resources. And this is why the new products need to be conceived as dual fuel engines from the design stage. Keeping their 100% natural gas burning capability while also allowing high hydrogen content. Second point, this must be achieved without compromising power rating, efficiency, operational flexibility and emissions. Despite the fact that reduced temperature is required to keep an OX level and flame position, 
Today is already possible to reach 100% hydrogen with diffusion combustion, but this implies that NOx emissions uh, are not compliant with the current uh, regulations and is required a significant operational derating. And to solve both these problems, we worked in two directions. On one side, we developed uh, retrofit solutions to minimize the rating, especially for very high hydrogen content. And on the other side, we develop our flagship GT36 gas turbine, maintaining the technical concept of the premix combustion and leveraging the experience of our GT26 gas turbines, which offers the sequential combustion. The sequential combustion is a key enabler for a low NOx hydrogen combustion. The first stage, the rating, is recovered by shifting the fuel into the second stage. And sequential combustion allowed us to go beyond the state of the art achievement and make the use of high hydrogen content possible, maintaining the same operational flexibility. The sequential combustion solution is at the core of the new GT36 H-class turbines. The GT36 offers high efficiency at full and part load, high turndown capability and uh, an unmatched flow flexibility. Entering in the very large class, the GT36 has been designed to reduce cost of electricity and CO2 emissions offering outstanding operational flexibility and maintainability. And all this ensure best power output together with best return of investment. The sequential combustion technology of the GT36 allows a high turndown, enlarging the emission compliant operation window compared to other combustion technologies. And this translates into more options for the power plant operator a clear advantage in today and especially in future power generation. So since uh, we've been talking about the uh, GD36, uh, let's see more about it in uh, the next video.
Now let's go back to existing plants. Uh, Stefano, uh, specific uh, plant and turbine interventions are necessary to make uh, hydrogen use possible, and their impact must be carefully evaluated in order to state the feasibility of the project. Can you tell us what modifications are needed? Uh, okay, uh, I think that Brindisi example will help us again. And uh, since this provides uh, empirical ex evidence of what well, I, I'm going to tell you, Brindisi case history allowed us to gather first-hand knowledge and a significant amount of information on hydrogen use and its implications. Based on this uh, wealth of information, we have built a set of solutions that can be now extended to all power plants, in particular to those equipped with our 9503A engines. But uh, I would not exclude the GT26 fleet, considering the embedded feature of GT26 to burn hydrogen, thanks to the sequential combustor architecture as described by Daniela. And in the near future, also including our GT36, the engine recently commercialized and being commissioned by the end of this year in Porto Marghera, north of Italy. The necessary modification to enable operation on hydrogen depend on the maximum intended hydrogen volume and uh, even regulatory requirements change for different gas safety classes. But let's start with the gas turbine first. Uh, below 5% hydrogen, no changes at all. It is still basically natural gas. Between 5% and 25% of hydrogen, the gas blend still belongs to the natural gas class. So the main modifications are therefore adaptions in the gas turbine and plant operation system that can be done easily during a standard outage of the gas turbine itself. Between 25% and 42%, uh, this is today an area called propane, and as Ansaldo Energia, we treat uh, this area as the higher class in order to avoid limitations uh, for our customers when increasing the hydrogen content. Above 42% of hydrogen, the gas classification is similar to pure hydrogen, therefore with really more severe requirements on explosion protection, gas detections and ventilation. This uh, affects the design and operation concept of the gas turbine, enclosure, auxiliaries, fuel distribution and purge systems. Let's go to the very hydrogen content and of course additional modifications may be necessary or beneficial in order to ensure economic hydrogen combustion. This might include the need of damming water supply to enable wet combustion keeping the performance really at the edge. Regarding the balance of plant, above 5% depending on hydrogen content, plant control systems are to be modified and operational model revised, as well as plant safety measures. In case of a dedicated hydrogen pipeline, regardless to the hydrogen content of the fuel gas blend, modification of the plant fuel supply systems are needed, and I'm thinking about filtration, pressure regulation, preheating, and blending. Thanks to the proofness and the intrinsic flexibility of our gas turbines, both families, AE and GT, all of these modifications can be done in virtually all plants currently in operations and are worth doing, as the Blindisi case history clearly demonstrates. Thank you, Stefano, for this uh, in-deep description. And now let's move uh, on to the future, uh, on the expected evolution of this uh, scenario. Daniela, let's talk about the... Um, uh, research and development uh, processes uh, your new products uh, come out from and about their assessment and targets. Well, Ansalt Energia committed to a strategic target, 100% hydrogen capable gas turbines by 2030. And this objective drives all of our research and development initiatives. We have been active uh, in hydrogen development for a long time and we have participated in many international research programs uh, over the years. Um, and in our hydrogen program, we apply a state-of-the-art and robust development process to offset any risk 
for the investors. This includes all the standard steps, from calculation to simulation, design, manufacturing, up to final validation. In particular, the combustion validation process is truly followed and confirmed by testing in several facilities, like we have in Germany at DLR, which is the German Aerospace Center in Cologne, and in Italy in the SESTA laboratories. What we adopt is a robust, future-proof procedure in line with the best industry practice. And we are very satisfied uh, with the results uh, we have achieved so far. The starting point is that a significant hydrogen content is required in the blend with natural gas to enhance CO2 savings. As an example, at 50% hydrogen by volume, the contribution to CO2 emission reduction is 22% only. At 70% is 41% and at 90% is 73%. And in order to avoid a heavy investment in carbon sequestration and storage and to reach 100 grams of CO2 by kilowatt hour, the combined cycle plant needs to burn around 90% of hydrogen by volume. So from a combustion point of view, high hydrogen contents are the most challenging. And our GT36 with standard hardware can be operated without any or with hardly any deviation from the performance offered by 100% natural gas. Thank you, Daniel. And talking about testing, let me introduce you in the next uh, video, Thorsten Osterage, uh, who is the product manager involved, that um, will report us on the latest combustion tests uh, results. Let's see the video. In our test facility at the German Aerospace Institute, DLR in Cologne, we are testing the GT36 single can combustor. Due to the perfect rig to engine transferability, this offers fully representative test results with minimized effort and cost compared to full engine validation in our GT36 validation power plant in Beer, Switzerland. This single can test facility was already very valuable for the GT36 combustor development, validating operation on natural gas and fuel oil. And in 2019, we have also started testing on hydrogen. As we heard, to achieve significant CO2 savings in blends with natural gas, more than 50% hydrogen by volume is needed. The tests performed so far have already demonstrated that with the sequential combustion technology, the standard combustor hardware can operate at 100% hydrogen content, although with some derating. The focus of our ongoing development is therefore performance optimization at high hydrogen contents, meaning more than 70% hydrogen, up to 90% in order to reach the 100 gram CO2 per kilowatt hour threshold and up to 100% to become completely carbon free. This includes measures like wet combustion, but always maintaining full operational flexibility and keeping the capability to burn 100% natural gas with the same hardware. This development ensures that our products can run flexibly and economically, also in a fully decarbonized future. Balancing renewable power, providing grid stability and reliable backup power with minimized or even now CO2 emissions. Now I would ask Stefano, how would you summarize the opportunities offered by hydrogen and power generation and the specific advantages of the Sald Energy proposition? As you all know, an increasing rate of electric power is generated by renewables. And therefore, energy storage is essential to balance the power system and maintain grid reliability. Power to gas, and I mean, of course, hydrogen, is the best solution to efficiently manage medium to long-term shifting, which demands huge storage capacity. Our dual fuel turbines uh, and or the relevant 
upgrade packages are an already available, effective and cost-efficient means to achieve this target, since basically they offer best-in-class operation flexibility. We are all aware that the business case is not there yet, but it will develop in the next years. A Roland Berger report predicts that the hydrogen costs of production from renewable sources are expected to substantially decrease in the years to come. And the cost gap will be reduced by technological innovation, especially in electrolyzers, and by the economies of scale generated by higher production volumes, resulting in higher hydrogen availability. As a consequence, uh, renewable generated green hydrogen is to become competitive versus blue hydrogen by the end of this decade, or even earlier. In the meantime, the partial use of green hydrogen will have an immediate positive effect on the carbon footprint, allowing all the power producers to align with future emission targets and safeguard their important investments. We also see new opportunities developing. Uh, hydrogen would be produced with electrolyzers when power price is low, typically when renewables are in overproduction. Uh, power plants could be built in proximity to hydrogen production to really reduce cost and more important risks of transportation. And uh, where it is not, this is not possible, H2 would be transported by converting existing pipelines with economically viable adaptations. Please note that this is something that's already happening. In uh, European Union, we have planned to incentivize electrolyzers capacity up to 6 gigawatt in 2024 and 40 gigawatt in 2030. In 2020, already the UK government announced funding for projects focused on low carbon hydrogen production. Something similar has been happening in the United States and Australia. The German regulator approved a stimulus package for adapting the existing pipelines to hydrogen dispatching, and similar initiatives have to be implemented here in Italy, in the UK and the United States. Moreover, uh, some hydrogen-rich byproducts that may be underused or even wasted could be burned into the gas turbine, offering first the opportunity to control CO2 emissions in hard to abate industries, and second, making the best of the proximity to oil fields, refineries, and chemical plants. Summarizing, uh, the, the landscape is rapidly changing, uh, and our products perfectly fit future needs. Their hydrogen capability ranges from 25% to 70% according to the turbine model, and we are fully committed to reach 100% by 2030 or earlier across the whole product range. The Ansaldo Energia distinctive feature is the extreme flexibility our machines provide that also translates into economic benefits for our customer. Again, it is possible to reach 70% hydrogen rate on the fantastic engine GT36 uh, without any change of combustion hardware. And 100%, I would say 100% can be achieved with the same kind of combustor architecture while also maintaining the capability to burn 100% of natural gas. And this is fundamental since hydrogen availability is expected to be fluctuating in the short and medium period. Moreover, our proprietary technologies and service know-how allow us to effectively, efficiently and safely retrofit existing power plants. We are currently in the position to offer, starting now, leading edge performances with both our engine portfolio and our retrofit packages in terms of absolute hydrogen capability, fuel flexibility with online switching only and no hardware modifications. 
we are uh, keeping the compliance with NOx emissions uh, and we offer best-in-class operational flexibility, manageable investment effort due to intrinsically high hydrogen capability embedded in the design of our top performing engines, the GT26 and again the brand new GT36. Strong validation experience for very high hydrogen content on the GT36 with the possibility of scaling down the technology to the rest of our turbo machinery portfolio. So even if hydrogen appears to be still marginal today, policies and targets are moving fast, very fast I would say, and so is the hydrogen supply scenario then the change will most probably occur faster than forecasted. And Ansaldo Energia offers all of you a future-proof technology which is available and ready today. So I thank Stefano Gianatti and Daniela Gentile for a synthetic but dense presentation of what we can expect in the uh, hydrogen uh, future. I am sure you all have uh, questions to pose, but that would better be done in context uh, uh, by applying uh, the general uh, consideration uh, you heard today to your uh, specific uh, reality. That's why I want to introduce you in the next video the Ansaldo Energia area managers you can refer to, to any, for any further inquiry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all. I thank you for your participation and I'll leave you with a final uh, video summarizing the core topics we discussed today. Producing energy while reducing CO2 emissions is the great challenge of our time. The contribution made by renewable sources to power generation is constantly increasing and today has reached 20% on average in Europe. But the electricity generated cannot easily be stored. Each increase in installed renewable power generation capacity causes an additional risk to the stability of the production network. A further rise in capacity will lead to increasingly frequent periods of overproduction, alternating with times of shortage. What can we do? The solution is simple. Use the overproduction of renewables to produce hydrogen by electrolysis, thus obtaining a CO2-free fuel. Hydrogen allows us to store large quantities of energy for long periods, to be used at times when renewables fail to respond to market demand. When using this hydrogen as fuel in highly efficient combined cycle plants, power production and demand can be balanced the power output can then be maximized at the right time and a clean, dispatchable and dependable reserve is established. All conventional combustion systems fail to handle hydrogen's much higher reactivity without compromising performance. By injecting less fuel, flashback risks are mitigated and the flame is moved back to the design position. But the exit temperature is lowered and performance is severely reduced. And Saldo Energia has overcome this problem by using its unique sequential combustion technology. In sequential combustion, 
the unused fuel from the first combustor stage is injected into the second stage. The first stage flame location is maintained thanks to its lower temperature, while the resulting lower inlet temperature of the second stage keeps its flame at the desired location despite increased fuel flow, recovering full engine performance. This is possible because the second stage flame is stabilized by auto ignition and mainly driven by the inlet temperature. And Saldo Energia's GT26 and GT36 turbines represent the most advanced combustion technology for hydrogen and hydrogen blends. The time has come to write a new story. A story of a cleaner, more efficient world. A story of hydrogen.